So last time we introduced the concept of continuous random variables, and we mostly talked about this idea of the uniform random variable. And now I want to introduce a new random variable called the exponential random variable. And this comes up a lot in the context of things like how long does a device last, or what is the time between arrivals of packets, or how long do you have to wait in line at the bank before you get service? So these kinds of queuing and networking problems, you see exponential random variables all the time. And so we know that now to, to define a new random variable, I need to tell you what is its CDF, cumulative distribution function. Well, for the exponential random variable, it's defined as zero when I'm less than zero, and one minus e to the minus lambda x when I'm some positive number. And I can kind of plot what that looks like. And let me just make a note that this lambda parameter has to be positive. Okay, so I'm always dealing with something that's kind of decaying as time goes on. So how does this look? Well, it depends on the value of lambda, but I know that um, you know it's got to be 0 at time 0. It's got to top out at 1. Since x could be any number, I never actually reach one with the CDF. I kind of asymptotically approach one. And then how quickly I get there depends on the value of lambda. So when lambda is smaller, I kind of get up there more slowly. So say, for example, this is like lambda equals one. But for a bigger value of lambda, like lambda equals five, I may get there faster. Okay. And so the idea is that for larger values of lambda, getting big values out here for values of x are less likely. Okay. Now I want to figure out what is the PDF for this exponential random variable. Well, I should take the derivative of the CDF. So let's take the derivative of this function. Clearly it's going to be zero out here, and then I'm going to have to take the derivative of this part. So the CDF, uh, PDF is the derivative of the CDF. It's equal to zero. And then I have lambda e to the minus lambda x when x is greater than zero, right? So the plot of that looks like 0 up to a point, and then I kind of have this exponential decay down to 0 that is slower for small lambda and faster for big lambda, right? So again, the idea is that when I have large values of lambda, probabilities of getting variables out here are pretty small, okay? And so one thing that I want to note is that oftentimes we're interested in how much probability is there under the tail of this PDF, right? So to say that a different way, what is the probability that x is greater than some number, right? That's like integrating the PDF up to that point. Actually, I take it back. It's like this integral, sorry, um, which is related to the integral I wrote by mistake by this, right? And this part here is just the CDF. So this is just like 1 minus the CDF up to that point. And so referring back to the CDF, I've got um, e to the minus lambda x. So this is something that's sometimes handy to know because I care about word problems like what's the probability that my oven lasts at least 10 years, right? That's a greater than x kind of a word problem, right? So. A couple things about the exponential random variable I just wanted to mention in passing. One is that it actually is related to the Poisson random variable, which is a discrete guy that we talked about a while ago. So let's suppose that we've got uh, some sort of arrival problem where you've got, for example, people arriving uh, to the bank, right? So I could think about that in two different ways. One way is the number of arrivals in time t, for example, which is a discrete random variable because I can only have an integer number of arrivals. Or I could think about a random variable x that is continuous, where x is basically um, the time it takes to the next arrival. Okay, so this is a continuous random variable. 
And the idea is that if um, n is Poisson, then x is exponential. Let's just kind of show why that's true. So let's suppose that um, this Poisson random variable has the parameter alpha, which is, I'm going to define it as lambda t. So this is basically lambda is kind of like the average arrival rate in packets per unit time. So I could ask, what's the probability that um, n equals 0? Well, it's alpha to the 0 over 0 factorial e to the minus alpha. That's how we define the Poisson random variable. In this case, alpha is lambda t. And I can see that this is exactly what I um, talked about on the previous slide. The probability that this exponential random variable is greater than some value t. So in a way, I can think about the problem in two different ways. right? You can, either I can say, what's the probability that I get zero arrivals in this time interval? Or what's the probability that I have to wait more than t units to see a rival? Right? One is a discrete problem, one is a continuous problem, and I can see that they're kind of related in this way. Okay. So that's just kind of a minor little, you know, relationship. The other thing I want to mention is that the exponential random variable has this memoryless property that we talked about for the geometric random variable in the discrete world. Just like there was only one discrete random variable, the geometric, that satisfied that, there's only one random variable, the exponential, that has this property. That is, what's the probability that the random variable is greater than t plus t0 given that it's greater than t. Well, this is a conditional probability that we can compute, right? It's a probability of both of these events over the probability of this event, right? The top event is just the probability that x is greater than this value, which is lambda like this. The denominator is this, and I can cancel this stuff out, I get this, which is just the probability that x was greater than t0 in the first place. So the idea here is that if I've already weighted you know, uh, t units, or if, if, if an arrival hasn't occurred in uh, t, then having to wait t0 more units is the same as having had to wait t0 units in the first place. So this is, again, only true for exponential. And it's just a good thing to, to know in general. So this is another example of I defined a CDF and a PDF, and that basically gave me a new random variable. And there are a bunch of other continuous random variables that we're not going to talk about too much in this class. So, um, you know, you may see reference to uh, a gamma random variable. A gamma random variable is kind of like a generalization of the exponential. And its PDFs usually look something like this. I'm not going to write down the formula because it's complicated and you're not going to learn that much from it. But you can basically get these kinds of humps that have, you know, kind of rise to a point and then taper off slowly. Another one that's sometimes useful is what's called a beta distribution. That one is uh, defined between 0 and 1, and it's big at the ends and low in the middle, right? So this might be something, for example, like I'm transmitting, um, you know, uh, a fax page that has got shades of gray in it, but it's mostly either black or white, and it's got very few shades of gray in between, right? Again, the formula for this is, like, super complicated, so I'm not going to bother to write that down either. But the one that's really important is called the Gaussian random variable. And I'm going to spend a couple lectures on talking about that because it's so important in science and engineering. So be sure to tune in for that.